In this video, I will create my own buttons, replacing the original circuit board from my new camera. I will use the service manuals from this camera, which have the detail schematics from which I will be able to copy, design, and then build my own circuits. So watch until the end to see if I let some magic smoke out, or if I have a working camera with my own buttons. In the last video, I set out to refine my creation by fixing all of the things which were bothering me. Mainly, I did some work around the stiffness of the chassis, making sure that the viewfinder doesn't move around. I did a little bit of work on the light leakage, and I was finally able to measure things with some amount of precision. At the end, the camera that I was using stopped working on me, which put a little stop to things. To keep the momentum going, I have bought myself yet another camera. But there is one problem. Unlike the last camera, I'm not as lucky with the layout of the buttons on the circuit board this time around. So, unfortunately, a lot of the work that I've done last video for the buttons is going to go out the window. I will still use what I've learned, but none of the things that I've designed and made will be useful. Before I dive into the buttons, I want to thank each and every single one of my 100 subscribers for being subscribers, so thank you. And if you haven't subscribed, you should. The button's just there waiting for you to press it. This is it, the new camera, the Sony NEX C3, the second generation of Sony's mirrorless cameras, one year newer than the NEX5 I had before, making this one only 12 years old, which is still a worthy upgrade considering I am putting this inside a camera from 1960 something after all. It's not in the best of shape, the battery cover has broken off and the LCD is tinted purple, which is great because I need none of those things. Only 30 minutes after buying it, I've already started taking it apart. You can see the buttons and my problem with them. The power switch is above the shutter button, which is not how it is on the Canon. There isn't an easy way to work around this the same way I did last time, so making my own buttons is the only solution. Because someone was kind enough to leak the schematics to the public, I will take advantage of that and get a good look in there to find out everything that I need to know. This is the page that I'm looking for, the button board at the top of the camera. There's the 25 pin ribbon connector on the left and all of the accompanying circuitry is there to uh, take inspiration from. So starting at the top, these are the few components that I need to copy over. First is the button battery and a 470 ohm resistor. Then the power switch will connect and all of the components I need will connect to this ground connection coming from the battery. Next is a battery temperature for Mr, which I will replace with a resistor to trick the camera instead of having to figure out what kind of a Mr this is and what values it should read. I've measured this already and it was reading 10k ohms, so I will simply replace it with a 10k ohm resistor. Then the last two pins we need to connect are for the shutter button, labelled 1 and 2. At this stage, I don't know which is the full press and the half press, so that we'll need to test later. Uh, there's also these two Zener diodes, which I wouldn't know what purpose they serve, and fortunately I don't have to find out because they're not mounted to the board. This is what I have sketched out, the most basic circuit I could create to turn the camera on and to take photos. My idea is to have the buttons on their own boards, making them separate to move around and place wherever they are needed. They would then connect to this main board, which has the battery, resistors, and the connection to the motherboard. I did have a go at designing the same circuit on EasyADA, but since I don't plan to have my circuit boards manufactured just yet, I didn't put too much thought into this. To be able to work with the tiny ribbon cables inside the Sony NEX, I bought some FPC breakout boards. Before I can do anything with this, I have to get rid of the larger set of holes, leaving only the smaller ones, then also cut down the middle of it so it isn't as long since I don't need half of these pins either. I was considering getting a 2mm pitch prototype board to match what is on this, but they are rare and expensive and I can't find any with free delivery. As this is a simple circuit, I will just use a breadboard that I will cut down and solder what I need to it, then epoxy it to the breakout board. The power switch I will use is a limit switch from a 3D printer. 
Then the shutter button will come from an Arduino starter kit. I won't be able to use this in the final version, but it's good enough to check if my idea works. All the planning out of the way, now I get to go and actually make it. Before I can do that, I need to take the camera apart so that I can plug my own board in, which nicely peels apart like an onion. I also need to take the screen away from this whole panel, then to protect it against myself, I've covered the back of it in tape. I have to break the boards to be a little bit smaller first, scoring them with a knife and then getting some help from a pair of pliers. I've got the battery from the old camera for it too. I haven't got a 470 ohm resistor, so two 1000 ohm ones will do in parallel. I'll mount this and the other resistor to the board. And now I get to epoxy it to the breakout board before wiring it. Lovely wiring work, isn't it? Don't you agree? Plugging it into the camera. There's no smoke yet, a good sign. Now let's put the battery in. That's good. Let's try the power switch. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. To fix my mistake, I now get to unsolder all of the wires from the breakout board, clean out the contacts and wire it back up backwards to what I thought it should be. It's really not getting any prettier to look at. Okay, so trying again now, but backwards this time. And the power switch works. Amazing. Then the shutter button, nothing. Okay, maybe it's the other connector. So let's try the other pin. It needs a memory card, so let's give it a card. And same result still. It recognizes I am pressing something, but doesn't take a photo. Maybe it needs both pins one and two to be close to take a photo. And it did, look at that, beautiful. Well, it's a working camera. Since I'm not interested in having the screen or the buttons on the camera, I haven't made any thought into copying over the rest of the circuit, but I am starting to realize that they should be there. The camera settings reset once this board with the battery is removed, so it does need configuring with the buttons and screen anyway. One more thing I have realized is that this will not fit inside the Canon as it is now. I have to either make this again by hand, or I can design something and have it manufactured. Plus, this thing is ugly. I like it when I make pretty things which work, but also look nice. This thing, it's not nice to look at. I still have some more thinking to do about the circuit boards. Uh, one of the big questions is about the cables and connectors. If I find the correct connector, where do I find the cable for this and uh, how much would it even cost? Plus, with how simple this circuit is, I'm starting to think that the cables and connectors might turn out to be more expensive than the rest of the things. So it seems like it might make more sense to design a circuit board that will cover everything for this one camera instead of having something that I can place around wherever I need. Until I get to that stage, I still have this whole new Sony camera to try and fit inside the Canon. I really hope that at least some of the parts line up in exactly the same place as last time, but I really don't know. I haven't taken a look at it yet, and I'm really excited to find out and get going on this, and I hope you are too. So thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video. Don't forget to like or subscribe if you like what you saw, and I'll be back soon with... I'm not quite sure what I will do next, actually. We'll find out when I come back.